This is High Adventure Ministries Global Radio Network coming to you from our studios in Southern California. This is an excerpt from a writing called I Was Thinking of You and it's written in the person of Jesus Christ and I invite you to come in into a place of meditation, into a place of prayer and listen as we watch Jesus and listen to his thoughts on his way to Jerusalem. Your thoughts of glory and mine are very different. You look at splendor, wealth, riches, honor in this life that comes from the praise of men. But greater love has no man than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. The path to glory is filled with self-sacrifice. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? I could see my Father in heaven. For the joy set before me, I was able to endure the cross. You are my joy. You are my joy. For you I became the blood of the Lamb spread over the doorway of your soul just as the Israelites smeared the blood on the posts and lintels of the doorways on the night of the Passover in Egypt, as the angel of death swept through the land to smite the firstborn. The blood of the Lamb symbolized the redemption of all who were in the house, just as my blood is poured out for you, so you can be saved forever from death. Now and forever, I was thinking of you. I knew that before this night had passed, before the sun rose over Jerusalem at the dawn of the day of preparation, that my closest friends, even Peter, would run and hide and even deny me. I knew that my beloved chosen children of Abraham would be preparing to sacrifice their own lambs for Passover. As many as could gather in Jerusalem were gathered for the feast. Yet my heart ached so deeply for my small band of eleven Talmudim, my disciples, my students, my followers. They were not much different from you. Some buyers, some sellers, some fishermen, some physicians, tax collectors too. A time is coming, I had told them, when you will all fall away. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Peter insisted, even if all fall away, I will not. Yet I said to Peter, even tonight, Peter, before the rooster crows, three times you will deny me. Never! I will never deny you! I will follow you to death! I loved the persistent Peter. It was on him I had chosen to begin my ministry, the rock, Petra. But before he was to be endowed with the supernatural power that caused him to stand up, on the steps of the temple, on the feast of Shavuot, to proclaim the power and resurrection of the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth, speaking in heavenly language, heard by his fellow Jews in 27 different dialects. Peter had to endure his own base emotions, human frailty of fear, of terror, of running for his very life. As I was led to be condemned and then to be crucified, When Peter denied me, it was the worst. It was the worst fear he had ever known. For a moment, he felt separated from his very Lord, his God. He felt lost, naked, without redemption. Just as you feel when you have been ashamed of me, your God, your Lord. I know you have denied me. I know you will deny me, even in your darkest hour. For this reason... I enter into this dark hour, so that in your dark hour you will know that the true light has come and the darkness has not overcome it, and will never overcome it, for I am the same in the light and in the darkness. If you are in darkness, call to me and I will answer. I will illuminate your darkness, for I, Jesus, am the light of the world. Let me be the light of your world. I entered darkness. I overcame darkness. Trust me in the darkness, for I am with you. Take my hand. Let me lead you, for I am your Savior, your Messiah, the one you have been waiting for, for I love you. 
I laid my life down for you, for I was thinking of you as I am thinking of you now. Just as I thought of Peter, of James, of John, my disciples. These were not men with supernatural power. These were real Jewish men who had grown up in and around Jerusalem, Galilee, had friends, families, had attended the temple, celebrated Pesah and Purim, along with the feast of the Torah. They did not understand that I had to die, that I was the Lamb of God who would take away the sins of the world. They had seen me raise the dead, heal the sick, make the lame to walk and the blind to see. They had stayed close to me, left friends, families, homes, and jobs to become my disciples. Even Peter had witnessed the healing of his mother after she had laid with fever for many days. At the touch of my hand, she got up and began to cook for her son. My heart bled for Peter, for James, for John, who sat so close at my feet, who stuck by me, who had looked in my eyes and had seen the power of their Messiah, the true bread that had come down from heaven to give life to the world. I told them to take heart, that I had overcome the world. But when the world turned against me that night, the night of my trial, I looked defeated. All seemed to be lost. There, there was three years of their life, their hope, their king, their future, being stripped, beaten, ridiculed, mocked, and tried before Caiaphas, the high priest, the one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man dies for the people. Then the detachment of soldiers with their commander and the leaders of the temple officials arrested me, bound me, and brought me first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas. Peter, James, and John followed close behind me at first, along with the other disciples. The soldier who wrapped my wrists and pulled my arms so hard that I might have dislocated my shoulder, he was afraid. Why is he not fighting? The soldier thought. I was thinking of him, a soldier doing his duty. How could he know he held the hands of God's own Son, the Messiah, the Anointed, the Christ, even if he knew I was the chosen one of the Jewish people, it would not have mattered to him. He was not Jewish. He knew nothing of the temple, the laws, the Torah. To him, Passover only meant that the streets of Jerusalem were filled with foreigners, with holy men in long robes, reciting long prayers, chanting blessings as the lambs were slaughtered. He did not know it was the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world even his, even those of his family. He was a young man, only 21. He had been married three years already. He had a family to feed and a demanding young wife who dreamed of going to Rome. One day hoped he would be promoted to captain or centurion. I, to him, was simply an order to be followed, a duty to be done. Yet there was something strange about the way he looked at me. He may have wondered why he had to arrest such a gentle man as this, so much like a lamb. He didn't know the one he was holding held in his hands the keys to hell and death. He didn't know that before Abraham was, I am. He may have thought I was a religious fraud or may not have thought about me at all, but I was thinking about him, about his family, just as I am thinking of you just as I am thinking of you now, as you bind me in your chains of judgment from yourself and those of other people, when what other people think of me cause you to act in a way, perhaps you never question their opinions, perhaps you do, perhaps you don't want to make waves or cause any problems or even lose your position in the government or your job or your position in the Roman legion for that matter. It is for this reason I must die, for your ignorance, for your defiance, for your compliance. I must die, for I am thinking of you, as I am thinking of you now, because I love you. You can find forgiveness. Don't turn away. Look at me, the Lamb of God. I am thinking of you. I came for my own, the lost sheep of Israel, 
but they did not receive me. But as many as receive me, I give the right to be sons and daughters of God. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, John the Baptist had proclaimed. The light shone in the darkness, but the darkness did not comprehend the light. The light reveals men's hearts, whether they be good or evil. I dwell with those who have a contrite and humble spirit. Even though these priests of the Torah had studied about me in Isaiah, Zechariah, the Psalms, they did not recognize me. Their hearts were hard, and it grieved me so. Some had come to me in secret and in the night. Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea, how curious these men were, how open to see the truth, how pure their hearts were as they laid their questions before me. How can one be born again, re-enter his mother's womb? Nicodemus addressed me as teacher, rabbi. He knew I had come from God. He was on the edge of the most crucial truth in the universe. To enter the kingdom of God, one must be born of the Spirit, I said. To be born of the flesh is to be born into sin, a fallen and perverse world held captive under the sin of Adam. To be born of the Spirit is to have one's eyes open to understand the mystery of the love of God, the love who gave his only Son, who now stood before the court of the Sanhedrin. Here I was, the Anointed One, Emmanuel, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the one to whom the scepter of Shiloh had passed, but in their jots and tittles and dottings of the eyes, in the ordinances and the rabbinical laws, exacting their labors and arguing each point, the Son of God stood before them, the grace of Adonai, and in their zeal they had searched the scriptures, but they did not come to me to know me and how I loved each one, how I hoped they would see me, but a hard heart has blind eyes. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how you stone those who are sent to you. After this, your temple will be left to you desolate. How I long to gather you as a hen gathers her chicks. Couldn't they see the compassion in my eyes? Couldn't they see I was not putting up a fight? Why were they so afraid? Often those who are afraid accuse and condemn others. So for these and for anyone who has ever condemned an innocent man to die, even if it is you, I have stood in the judgment seat. I have stood in the judgment seat for you. When you are trapped under the weight of your own law, when you have exacted your labors until your heart is stone cold and you need to know you are still loved, can be forgiven, it was for them I had to die and for you. For I was thinking of you as I'm thinking of you now. Thank you again for joining us. This is High Adventure Ministries Global Radio Network.